Hello, my name is Pat Humphreys. I'll be reading Animal Farm today, just some excerpts. And I'm a librarian at the Katona Village Library. I'm the teen librarian, I'm the reference librarian. I am the person who knows about the periodicals or magazines as you are, newspapers. I'm the person who also helps you find things. So drop by and see me. Now, today I'll be reading Animal Farm, but first I want to tell you a few things about uh, Banned Books Week. And that is that the American Library Association started Banned Books Week in 1982, and we are celebrating its 30th anniversary. Now, American Library Association, you know, we met librarians, many of us are members of the American Library Association, actively advocate, advocates in defense of the rights of library users to read, seek information, and speak freely as guaranteed by the First Amendment. You know, and that's the whole idea of the public library provides free and equal access to information for all people of the community. And we should enjoy this. This should be a basic right in our democratic society. As uh, Supreme Court Justice William J. Bryan Jr. Jr. said in one of his decisions, if there is a bedrock principle underlining the First Amendment, it is that the government may not prohibit the expression of an idea simply because society finds the idea itself offensive or disagreeable. Now, just to let you know, people haven't stopped challenging books. In 2011, there were 326 challenges to books. Among them were, just in 2011, Color of Earth by Kim Dong Hwa, Hunger Games Trilogy, that's well known, My Mommy's Having a Baby by Doris Dory Butler, The Absolutely Part-Time Diary of a I'm sorry, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, Gossip Girls, and last but not least, To Kill a Mockingbird. Now I'm going to read from you some excerpts from the Animal Farm by George Orwell, once again, and uh, just to give you a sample of what it is that people objected to. I'll start with the first page and just pick up little excerpts along the way. Just let me find my first page, and there we are. Mr. Jones of the Manor Farm had locked the hen houses for the night, but was too drunk to remember to shut the pop, the pop holes. With the ring of light from his lantern, dancing from side to side, he lurched across the yard, kicked off his boots at the back door, drew himself a glass of beer from the barrel in the scullery, and made his way up the, to the bed, where Mrs. Jones was already snoring. As soon as the light in the bedroom went out, there was a stirring and a fluttering all through the farm buildings. Word had gone round during the day that Old Major, the prize middle white boar, had had a strange dream on the previous night and wished to communicate it to the other animals. I go to the next page where it starts. All the animals were now present except Moses the tame raven, who slept on a perch behind the back door. When Major saw that they had all made themselves comfortable and were waiting attentively, he cleared his throat and began. Comrades, you have heard already about the strange dream that I had last night. But I will come to the dream later. I have something to say first. I do not think, comrades, that I will shall be with you for many months longer. And before I die, I feel it my duty to pass on to you such wisdom as I have acquired. I have had a long life. I've had much time for thought as I lay alone in my stall, and I think I may say that, that I understand the nature of life on this earth, as well as any animal now living. It's about this that I wish to talk to you. Now, comrades, what is the nature of this life for us? Let, let us face it, our lives are miserable, laborious, and short. We are born, we are given just so much food as we can keep the breath in our bodies, and those of us who are capable of it are forced to work to the last atom of our strength, and the very instant that our usefulness has come to an end, we are slaughtered with hideous cruelty. He goes on to talk more about their lives, and then he goes to say, Is it not crystal clear, then, comrades, that all the evils of this life of ours spring from the tyranny of human beings? Only get rid of man, and the produce of our labor would be our own. Almost overnight we could become free and rich. What then must we do? Why work night and day, body and soul, for the overthrow of the human race? That is my message to you, comrades. Rebellion. I do not know when that rebellion will come. 
It might be in a week or in a hundred years. But I know as truly as I see this straw beneath my feet that sooner or later justice will be done. Fix your eyes on that, comrades, throughout the remain short remainder of our lives. And above all, pass on this message of mine to those who come after you so that future generations shall carry on the struggle until it is victorious. So I'm going to read. He makes it very plain. Rebellion. And this, this book was challenged because of its political theories that they saw in it, because of the idea of rebellion, and because people felt it just wasn't the thing they wanted their children or that other people should hear. But once again, that would be against our First Amendment and is no reason why people should not be able to read this. So, Animal Farm by George Orwell, I recommend it. And I'm sure everybody has read it since middle school always and the high school have always had it on their summer reading. Thank you.